Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard that was sent down to me. I have taken a look at another keyboard that was a collaboration between one of these companies and another, uh, Yunzi and Royal Axe. But this one was sent out to me by ProtoArc. So this is a ProtoArc Royal Axe. It's a 65%. It has a three mode. Though I've been seeing a few of these that have both 3.0 and 5.0 Bluetooth. I'm not sure if they have two different modules in there or those modules just connect at um, different uh, versions depending on backwards compatibility and everything. Now, this is called the Royal Axe ProtoArc R68. So I am, I have taken a look at the uh, Royal Axe Yunzi. I believe it was a 65% as well and it was it was interesting. This one um, also seems interesting to me, so I decided we take a look at it today. Let's take a look at the box and see what it says. And the multi-device, so you can have up to three devices through Bluetooth. Hot swappable shafts. In case you guys don't know, shaft or axis is, is usually what is used um, with Chinese marketing when referring to switches, axis or or shafts. Um, symphony lighting effect so it has the music lighting effect which are there people that actually use that because I mean personally I don't um, and I'm just I'm just curious if anyone does if you guys if there's anyone out there that actually uses the music light effect with your keyboard like to play music and have your keyboards light react to the music let me know in the comments below because I'm honestly curious I've seen this feature for quite some time but i've never encountered a single person that says oh yeah i use that feature so just curious and we have full key conflict free design now i don't know what that means i've seen it used in different contexts so i'm not even going to try to assume i know what it means all right so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we've got the brown colorway i believe yeah it does come in three different colorways purple brown and blue I'm more of a earthy tone kind of guy. So we have a uh, quick user's guide here. Um, only one-sided. I work on both sides because I believe Keychron was the first to do this and then a lot of other manufacturers are following suit. But it shows that the knob on the side is used as a mode switch knob and it's not a volume knob as some, even myself, might have assumed. We do have some spare switches. Now it does look like these are the Gatoron yellows. Now if these are KS3 or KS9, I'm not sure, but perhaps we'll find out more as we dig in. All right, so we have a keycap, a wire keycap puller. We have a wire switch puller separate than the wire, or the keycap puller. And we have a USB-C to a USB-A cable. And it is on a, in an off-white colorway. So it kind of does match this um, this beige on here. Now I must say I am glad that this is becoming uh, a habit amongst the uh, keyboard manufacturers. They're including a, um, a dust tray or dust cover for keyboards, which honestly, I mean, it's a cheap thing to include, but for some people, especially if they're going to be leaving their keyboards in the office over the weekend or whatever, to put that dust tray on it, it's going to keep it much cleaner than it would otherwise. So not and i think in a lot of situations people don't necessarily go out of their way to get a dust cover for their keyboard but if one is included with it they're going to use it hence more likely they're going to keep their keyboard clean so yeah it's it's nice to have that you know that custom fit dust proof cover all right so taking a look at this real quick we do have some sub legends on the front of the keycaps that show you the different functionalities it looks like we have light effects Page up, page down, home end, scroll lock, and uh, function. And it has the dual legends for whether you're on Windows, which is the top, and Mac, which is the second. Not that I mind this. I just think that manufacturers could include the keycaps. It's only three or four different keycaps to change from Windows to Mac. And unfortunately, we're going to be dealing with multiple operating systems for a while, but Windows and Mac seems to be the primary ones. So 
adding a couple of three extra keys in there I don't think would cost the manufacturers much and it's not going to confuse people. I do know that there are some Mac users that still take a double take when it has the dual legends on there because they're like, am I in Mac mode? Now, I hardly ever use a Mac, so I can't say. Um, I actually just don't even switch the key maps because I'm so used to. So, But that's me. So we've got a decent half to the board. It's not light by any means. I actually kind of like this. Uh, it's a... Oh, it's a cylinder design for the bottom feet, but it also has a pocket for the 2.4. It does seem to be magnetized as it gets sucked back in there. So that's that's cool. I do like when they do that, and it seems to be that it's not going to fall out there too easy. Now, though, this one, I'm going to say, I like the other ones that are more like a pocket. This one, if you have it loose in your bag... I'm going to guess that it could get snagged on something and get pulled out. Now that magnet's going to help, but there's a possibility. Just saying. So we have a Windows, Mac, physical switch, and then we have Bluetooth. Okay, we have Bluetooth, 2.4, USB, and off. All right, how is this USB if it's not plugged in? I'm not sure I get that, but... does not sound half bad for stock. Now this, I can tell you, this is going to be an issue. I didn't really think about it that much until I'm looking at it right now. Um, you have a single backspace key. So already you're going to have some keycaps that they're just not going to have that single backspace key. I can't think of too many. I mean, I think the ghost judges do and some of the MT3 caps, just off the top of my head. But that's going to be an issue if you're ever wanting to change out the keycaps here. Honestly, I would have said it would have been better to put the light indicators along the edge and just left the knob stick out a little bit more so that you could have the full size delete key. Um, adding a knob that is... I mean, yes, it's functional, but it's not as functional as a volume knob that can be remapped. Um, having a knob here that only is a mode switch when it could have just been an easy slider on the side as well as the Windows and the Mac could have been just like Keychron does on the side and then left the knob for volume because the first thing I, I thought when I saw this that that's a programmable knob. Um, I did not look further into it but so if you're looking for a knob this is it. Now other than that single backspace I must say I, I do kind of like the um the color layout i am not though and i can say this because i know myself i'm not a fan of putting the sub legend side by side um, just like i'm not a fan of doing the windows and the mac keys on the same key um, to me this is another example of bad sub legending just like this this is the um a jazz uh, nacodex ac AC081. Um, this was sent to me by Keep Monkey as a gift because it actually didn't have any stabilizers and just a mix of random keys. Um, so it was just kind of sent to me as a gift. I've, I've been meaning to get to this. But uh, the keycap set, I mean, you have your sub legends below. The sub legends are supposed to be above. At least they are in the majority of keyboard kits. But to the side or below, any non-standard placement, I'm just, I guess I'm just not a fan of because it takes away that familiarity. Yes, I like new keyboards and new layouts and, you know, but when you do something to where you're going to limit certain keycaps from working, like, I mean, it's a keycap set. I, I really honestly can't think of too many that have a single backspace key. So that to me is going to be an issue. This, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be that much of an issue to people, but to me it is. Because it's just, every time I look at it, I'm going to stop and go, why? Why? All right, so I'm going to set that aside for right now. and just take a look at the build of this keyboard and see what we have.
All right. So it does look like we have pretty thick foam, or I should say probably silicone, between the plate and the PCB. Though I don't see any foam, at least on the side, any case foam. Let's see about another spot here. Sometimes you have to look right in the middle. Sometimes they have foam that doesn't cover the whole bottom. And for some reason, these switches are a little tough to pull out. I'm going to say probably the tolerances on the plate are a little tight. All right, there we go. So taking a look at the metal here, and still looks like there's no case and piece case foam, and the paint on this. Um, on the plate it seems to get scratched quite easily, which not a big fan of, especially seeing that there's pretty tight tolerances on the plate. They don't have the uh, little wedges, though that's only usually found on other plate materials. So now for the switch, we have all right, due to the lack of ping, I'm going to say these are probably yellow pros, though. It didn't say anything specifically that said that here. Not disassemble the product by force. <laughs> Do not put in the rain, in the sun, or in a fire. I think we could follow those instructions. Oh, the Bluetooth 3 is for when you're using Windows 7 or below. Hmm, all right. I'm so <laughs> far away from Windows um, that I, I wasn't even aware of that issue. So on their site, it just says Gateron SMD yellow mechanical switches. But being as there's no ping in here, I gotta assume that they're the pros. But I'm just curious as to why they don't put that on here. So they do seem to be a company based out of Woodlands, Texas, which is nice to see more American companies getting into the game. So yeah, they, they named this a collaboration. They have three of these. They have a full size and they also have a 1800. I'm not the biggest fan of them, you know, replacing, because that's just, that's the only key. Besides that, if you have a 65% compatible keycap set, it's gonna work except for the backspace. So I'm just curious as to why they chose that. Now we do have five pin compatibility, but we also have, North facing LEDs that are literally sticking up, what, about five, four or five millimeters above the PCB. So the problem is now, okay, great, we can use three or five pin hot swap sockets or switches, but what about when we're dealing with like kale switches like this? See how, I mean, it is an LED, but it's got a um, diffuser built right into it. So if I want to put this in here, guess what? It's not going to go in all the way because that LED is stopping it. So to me, that is a huge, huge issue because why are you doing three to five pen hot swap yet you're putting those in there? Because there are going to be some people that either want to buy these that have the light diffuser or they're going to buy something like this that has the holes for an LED, a diode, but does not have even an opening. So you're gonna find yourself in the same situation to where it'll barely fit in, but it's gonna be tilted at an angle. And if you push any further, I mean, you see, I should not be able to pull, especially with these tight tolerances, pull a switch out with my hands. Why? Because it's not in there all the way. So that makes me question if this is an older PCB that has been you know kind of refurbished and put into a new case because that's not necessarily what I'd say a good idea now we do have double shot keycaps which is pretty rare although it's becoming more and more common nowadays let's see what the size of these are whoa all right so down to the edge we have 0.9 but once you get into where the double shot is that it goes down the sides of the body you're actually looking at closer 1.6 so that's pretty decent 
I, I can say that I do like that, and uh, I can't say I know what the profile is offhand. It looks almost like an MDA. Let me see if they state what profile it is. All right, oil resistant double shot PBT keycaps, but what profile are they? I'm on their site and every like 15 seconds there's like an ad to sign up for their email um, newsletter comes up. I think I, sh I should only have to dismiss that once, not multiple times. They do not seem to put what profile these are. Five pin hot swap compatible, but that's the thing. You're not going to be compatible with these type of switches. There's nowhere on here. So I want to say MDA, but it has a bit of a curve to them so but I think they're flat except for the curve or the actual case so I think MDA because they seem to be a little bit taller than an XDA but they're almost uniform all the way across let's take a look at these lights real quick let me see maybe I need to be plugged in so let me put this on USB I'm still not sure what the USB versus, I mean, it should just be wired. All right, so I'm in USB now. So it looks like this one is supposed to be the light changer, but it's not doing anything. What about this? Hmm. I guess we'll have to reach out to the manual for this. This is a waste of paper. So this one changes the colors to solid colors or monochrome colors as it says here, but switch the backlight mode. It says function and light bulb. Okay, wait a minute. This says function and this says function. Oh, that's why we have the blue and the orange. All right, now I got it. So we've got two different functions. This is function one, this is function two. So. Or those are the monochrome colors. Where is the light bulb to change the light effects? Oh, there they are. All right. Orange on brown isn't necessarily the best mix. So that does it change effects? Turns it on and off. Is that the brightness on the backwards configuration? Okay, that's minus, that's plus, that's backwards. That's on or off. Oh, there's the modes, all right. That's orange. All right, those are the effects. All right, well, it's pretty non-standard and unfortunately has the brightness. Usually you go this way up, that way down, but they have it backwards. So this is actually dimming it, or that's up, this is dimming. Oh. So I don't don't necessarily get why they did that back. Not sure I can say I'm a fan the biggest fan of the um, the way they're laying this out because it's like they're both called function but one is function blue and one is function orange um, I'd rather just have function one and function two and I'd rather have it down here because I mean page up page down with function okay that kind of makes sense but home and end for the arrows that doesn't make sense a lot of these um, shortcuts are just non-standard not that there is a standard cross manufacturers but for the most part a lot of them use very similar uh, key combos but this right here so this is nothing the top layer of this is nothing I mean how is that efficient I just this key is just, all it does is provide a function. So I'm not sure I necessarily 
understand what's going on here. But I'm going to take a quick look at the software. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the collaboration keyboard between Royal Axe and Proto Arc. This is the R68, 65% three mode wireless keyboard. It comes weighing it at 700 grams and MSRPs for $83.99 from protoarc.com and is also available on Amazon with a $5 off coupon. It is preloaded with Gatoron Yellow, perhaps Pro, switches. It also includes double shot PBT, what I assume is MDA profile keycaps. It has a knob which is only used for a mode switch and is not programmable. The PCB also includes protruding LEDs which rise above the PCB approximately 5 millimeters, impeding switches that do not have the SMD cutout. It also includes a non-standard layout including a 1U backspace key and a single layer function 2 key. The chin of this keyboard sits at 17 millimeters off the ground and the back sits at 38 millimeters, providing with a high typing angle of 13 degrees default. I do have to say, I have an issue with keyboard sellers, manufacturers, when they have a download section or they put little thought or effort into the download section and then the link goes to a Google Drive link. Now, I'm going to assume that these companies have not read the terms and conditions for Google Drive, but you're not supposed to use it for commercial distribution of software. Um, so this one, despite it going to Google Drive, it would never download. I literally opened up several different tabs. I eventually had to go and download an older version from a French website that had it mirrored and then update it inside of the software to get the right software. Now the software package sits at 100 megabytes. So I turned on TCP view and as soon as I opened up the driver software, it asked me for permissions to my network to be able to transmit and set up basically filters on the firewall. So I said no. And it continued to try to maintain a connection as well as open a TCP IP6 version, version four and a version six port on my computer but it's still it kept anytime this was open or when you open it it puts a tray icon so even if you close it it's still open the tray it maintained an open network connection and it really tries to get you to use their music function you know the lights to the, to the music now I didn't dive in any deeper but that's the kind of software that I don't want on my computer or on my network for that matter because you have a microphone in here you can't do the music magic without a microphone so in my impression it's a listening device now that said i kept hitting this a whole bunch of times when i wanted the backspace i think this is too much of a change in a format this is a 68 percent now 68 percent which i'm very fond of have this layout here but above your backslash and your pipe is your backspace and it it should not this should not be there these these switches this knob could have been scooted off to the side i mean it really this knob is pointless it might be there for looks but i prefer functionality over looks obviously i don't want something ugly but i need something that's going to be functional for me and not cause me to try to hit a key that's not there now the software is some of the basic I mean it's been seen on many other softwares uh, it does have a sleep tab so you can change sleep based on what mode you're in though I have to say it has an off mode all the way up here no it's Bluetooth all the way down at the bottom it has an off mode so it doesn't do anything when you press the keys but if you plug it in, that lights up. And it works. So what is the point of the USB one? Off is it. 
it's just but when you put it on USB if you don't have it plugged in it'll activate it's not connected to anything so I can just sit here and activate now it does go to sleep after a few seconds but still what's that all about um, it does have per key RGB but unlike others where you can select a whole section or row you're, you have to go key by key there's no selecting numbers modifiers alphas all if you want to do per key RGB you have to set the color on each and every one. You can't just select a section. Um, it has the macro section. And as far as remapping any other keys, as long as it doesn't have a legend or a sub-legend, or the sub-legends on here, you can remap them. But this function key can't be remapped. Most of these top keys can't be remapped. So for the most part, you have to live with what they give you. As opposed to what some people may think, I don't instantly go for keyboards and want to find negative things about it but i can't ignore things that i personally find negative. so while this isn't an awful board it has some things that i think are going to bother a good majority of the users um, for one the backspace uh, i mean obviously I, I like the style of this though i do not like that i mean I understand they want to brand stuff, put it on the bottom. I don't want to be advertising your product. But the quirks here are just too many. I mean, this whole mode switch thing <clears throat> could be just a, a key combo or it could be a switch on the side. Indicators could be lights on the side um, and other places. Uh, this knob, it just it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't really work when I have it. I mean, if you have it and off, why can I still use it? I mean, it just, there's no purpose for off. This could have been a volume knob, and it would have been nice. But that, mm. also, no foldable feet. I mean, mm, not sure I'm too happy about that. Also, there's no case foam. So, while it doesn't sound too bad, there is some hollowness in there. Um, yeah, And for the price, I mean... Basically, let's say this is $90. Um, so, I'm stuck with these keycaps. I don't have any more. If I want to get another set, I'm going to have to get one that has a single 1U backspace key, which is going to be difficult, if not impossible. The software is instantly trying to connect to servers in China um, when you load up the software. Why? Uh, the keys... A lot of them are not remappable. Uh, this column is kind of pointless. Um, the print screen, the scroll lock, I can't remap these. I can't remap that. I can't remap these. So that whole navigation column is usually meant for users to program them and set them up in a format that they like and they're used to. So I hate to bring another keyboard into the video, but I feel... That is necessary to you now this board is the gmk 67 it's gone from anywhere from 40 to 55 dollars i was lucky enough to get one for 42 dollars hitchhiker's guide um and it does come bare bone so you do have to add switches and keys and on here i actually am using halo's keycap sets for right now because i really just like them. they just sound nice and they actually look nice i hope that Nufi. Um, they're they're currently deciding whether they're going to start putting out KOP profile keycaps in different colorways, and I think they're leaning towards doing that. So I'm quite excited. Um, but if you're starting out, you got a steel plate that's stiff, and it's not gasket mounted. So take that into consideration. Number one, number two, it has an off um, layout. So your keycap sets aren't going to work on here. Three, it's got a knob that's basically pointless. It could have just been a switch, um, just like it is here, but on the side. This is not something you're going to need on a constant basis. This isn't either. I mean, if you're going to switch from Bluetooth to wired or whatever, people don't mind picking up the keyboard and hitting the switch. But putting it right there front and center, if it was for things that you know you could program or if it was for volume, Sure, not a problem, but I, I just, I'm trying to understand where 
they thought that was a good idea. They don't do it on the other models. They have a 90 or an 1800 and a full size, but obviously they're putting it up here in the corner where there's already some blank space on those keyboards. They usually like show just the LED indicators, but it's the same little cluster, Windows, Mac switch and the mode switch. So say this one's $90, this one's say 45. That still leaves you, you know, another $40 roughly to get some switches and keycaps, which yeah, you might get some cheaper ones, but you can get some decent ones and be able to be off and running. Um, I mean, there's tool shot ABS keycap sets in almost every colorway for like 22 bucks from Yonkui on, on uh, AliExpress. And you could get a, a set of uh, milky yellow pros for around 18 to 20 dollars enough to load this up. I mean, so you're right in the same price range. Now, what are you getting here over that? I mean, you're getting a software program that allows you to change practically every one of the keys except for function. Um, you have a knob. Now, the knob cannot be customized beyond volume and, and uh, mute. So that's unfortunate, but you don't even have anything to program over here. You've got a standard layout that's going to work for whatever you need. You've got indicator lights here for a blocker, which I think honestly it's ingenious because they're not only adding the blocker, which adds a nice bit of style to it, but then it adds some functionality to it as well. And then you have a better pocket, in my opinion, for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle when you have your Windows, Mac, and your mode selection switch on the side, which to me makes a lot more sense. Now, as well, on the bottom, you have the ability to get three different typing angles as opposed to the severely high 13 degrees this thing has. I mean, it is just, it's almost a torture device. Um, now granted, it can be lifted up if you're using a, a wrist rest, but I, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of pre-builds that are coming out nowadays that are actually, they're worthwhile. And I was hoping this was gonna be one of them. Like I said, I did make the assumption that this was a volume knob. I didn't look into it that much. Um, I also just kind of missed that that was a single U backspace, but this is what comes on most keycap sets. I hardly ever see a single backspace key. Now granted, you could put a delete key there, but that's not your delete. And that's not one of the keys that you can remap. Basically, any of the keys that have a sub-legend, you can't remap them. You can here. Okay, so this is only volume and mute. But that's fine. You've got different angles you can put the keyboard at. Um, you have a PC plate, which... I mean, this is stock. This is stock. Um, I'm running the... Actually, the same. The yellow pros are in here sure yep these are the yellow pros so we've got the same switch but as you'll notice here that hard steel plate kind of comes into play whereas here Mind you, this is stock. I have yet to do anything to this. I put switches and keycaps on, and I've been using it and enjoying it. I just, at no point have I been like, oh, I gotta get, fix that stabilizer. Because they're, it sounds very nice and it feels nice. That, and the flex. This keyboard has flex stock. There's nothing else you need to do to it to get flex. This is stiff, why? because it's a tray mount. Now that, and one of my biggest um, issues with this is going to be that there's gonna be a lot of people that are like, oh, okay, it's compatible with most switches. Okay, well, what happens when you get a switch that doesn't have an SMD window and you have this. I mean, you literally grab that LED. That's old. 
So, to me, I kind of get the impression that they're, uh, they are, uh, repurposing an older PCB. And they're using this. Because, yes, you can get the switch in there, and it will connect, but guess what? It's not in there all the way. You shouldn't be able to pull a switch out with just your fingers. It's supposed to be in there tight enough to where that doesn't happen. I guess that's another thing. This is the GMK67 again. Um, this isn't an issue for me, but a lot of people do care about this. We have south-facing LEDs. Um, this also comes with the PE foam sheet, which does make a difference. This one does not. Um, this one allows for any switches, whether it be non-SMD window switches, like this cherry brown. And I can't pull it out with my hand. I could pick up the keyboard by it. <laughs> um, so, in my opinion, uh, this keyboard is just not... Um, doesn't offer a good value proposition. The software is limited. The switch selection is limited despite what they may say. The design is is off. The layout is off. Um, it is a tray mounted steel plate north facing. So it's just like um, an article I came across today from Switch and Click that was basically just a redone article from 2020 saying what the top mechanical keyboards to get for newbies. And at the top was a Ducky SF1 3 Mini, as well as an Alt Drop or Drop Alt keyboard. Um, those are all old and they don't really have a place in mechanical keyboards today. Um, a lot of in-stock manufacturers have really upped their game, as for example on this GMMK, uh, or GMK, sorry, it's not a GMK, it's a G, it's not GMMK, it's GMK, it doesn't, has nothing to do with glories, thankfully, but offering this as a pre-built that is limited to switches, is limited to keycap sets, only has one typing angle, um, doesn't have a programmable knob, has a knob that really doesn't make much sense, and has software that seems iffy at best. I don't understand where they think this value is. Now, if this keyboard was $40, $45, I'd say, hey, that's a great deal. You, you'll know the limitations, but you're paying much less for it, so right on. Good switches, decent keycaps, granted, not like you're going to be able to use the keycaps anywhere else, but that's going to be a pain. But if you don't plan on switching out the, the keycaps and the uh, the switches, well, I mean, yeah, that would be a good $40 board. I mean, if you're not going to do anything else to it, but it's, it is kind of flat. I just, I, I, I it's like um, a manufacturer I dealt with the other day, the, the Me Kit. They have several keyboards. They all have knobs, sliders, some cool stuff on them. They didn't release software. They released the hardware and they're like, we didn't know that users would want to customize their keyboard. You're a keyboard company that didn't realize that people like customizing mechanical keyboards. If I had to guess, I would say that they, somebody had a whole stock of some older PCBs and decided to come up with a new case around it or had planned this a while ago and just decided to get around to building it but designed it you know based on 2020 specs even 2019 because you don't see those raised leds much anymore except for on the really really budget boards but honestly this would have been better without leds if you're gonna be using leds that are gonna limit switches then don't use leds there's people out there that are fine with mechanical keyboards without RGB. I have a few of them myself. One of my favorites doesn't have um, perky RGB. It only has down, downward facing. That's a Tiger Light. I love that thing. It's a great keyboard. No perky RGB. Flex cuts. Works great. So, honestly, I think that would have been a plus. Because then, 
I could use any switch I want to on it. But again, it's an orthofixie. Not an issue for me, an issue for a lot of other people. So, again, it's not that I look to be negative. I want to love keyboards. I mean, any keyboard I see, I, I do try to see the positive things in it. And I mean, if there's not too many positive things or there's more negative things about it, well, then that's all I can focus on. Because I intend to always be honest. And I mean, yes, I appreciate companies working with me and sending out models. And majority of the time, I like them. You know, I might have a, a little little thing that bugs me, you know, but it's not a big issue. But when you have a whole list of issues, they add up. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, you should buy this board. I'm going to present it to you. And I'm going to let you decide. I never tell anyone, don't buy this or you should buy that because that's not my money. I intend to do my best to inform and to bring up any issues that I think may be issues for some people, may not be for others, but at least I can answer some questions, especially in this situation, I've answered a whole bunch of questions that aren't even listed on the advertisement pages for this keyboard, which makes me think, yeah, they're trying to hide some of the things on here. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not saying they're nefarious on purpose, but I am saying that they're, they're not being very upfront about with this keyboard. I was expecting something much better than this, honestly. So again, um, if you guys have any comments, any questions regarding this keyboard, I probably will come back to it at some point and open it up, see what's in there and see if I can get rid of that, that dull, dullness that it has. Life. I mean, even just a PE foam sheet would make this sound a whole lot different. Um, seriously. Again, I actually liked the old, uh, the Royal Axe that I took a look at, but same thing with the PCB, the raised LEDs. It's just, eh. So, um, I don't know. I, I enjoy keyboards. And yes, I like how this one looks. But when I look closer, the warts start coming into view and focusing well. And I, I find that to me, it's not a board that I'm like, hey, I can't wait to use this. Um, because like I said, it just, it's not just one or two little minor complaints. It's a slew of them. And I just have a hard time seeing that a company doesn't understand, you know, what, what the problem is. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this, uh, the R68 by Royal Axe and ProtoArc. And, um, love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments on this board. And, um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you guys think I focus too much on the negative on boards? I mean, even boards that I like, I've pointed out things I don't like about them. So, but I do go into every review with a positive attitude. And I'm not it's not like I'm mad. I'm not upset. I just I just don't think they're being you know, I think they're I think some of these manufacturers, I'm not saying Royal Axe or, or, or um Protoart specifically, but some manufacturers and resellers just tend to either skip information, leave information out. They just it seems like they're being disingenuous when it comes to keyboards such as this because they're pushing this as a great keyboard for a higher, you know, almost a hundred dollar price tag. And it really, it just isn't worth it. Uh, they got a small battery in here, 2,100 milliamp hours. At least it's more than 2,000, but um, poor RGB implementation. It's bright, but it's poor implementation. So, I don't know. I just, uh, also, I, I guess I was kind of expecting a little bit more from it because their site's nice, and it does seem to, they're, they're seeming to want to cater to a more, you know, mid to higher level tier, even though their prices are, you know, in the lower tier. But, um, and I like the keycaps. I do. Though, like I said, why didn't they put what profile they are? Why are these, I mean, you can have big legends and, and still have the sub-legends in the right place. Um as they are right now, it just, I don't know, it just, it looks funky. I'm just used to them being above. But I mean, even making them smaller, make the actual legend more centered and then make this smaller up to the right or even centered. 
who cares? But, I mean, even these, just like, what? This is right. I mean, well, that works. I know some of them are like that, but usually it's on top. These are on top of each other. So, I don't know. Anyway, I'll get off my, my rant. I'll go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the R68 from Royal Axe and Proto Arc combo product. They have, like I said, they have this one and they have a 96% in a full size keyboard uh, that you guys can check out on protoarc.com. So, until the next transmission, you know what to do. Keep calm and keyboard on.